Hello everyone, so a quick update video from me. Um, don't know if I need an apology, I filmed one of these last night when things changed. I hope this is alright. It's just, this is my video, this is running by a movie player classic, and I explained it was in the other video, but obviously that one never got loaded. Um, a movie player classic, and this is my, so it's not affecting YouTube views at all. Um, I can prove that to you if you want. Tell you what, I will. So my keyboard of good typing and mouse clicking. So video, you see moving there. That is clearly not YouTube. This is Media Player Classic. And uh, yeah, not affecting views. Anyway, so it's my own video there as well, which is so much better. Um, uh, briefly would explain if I should have put a caption on these two. That's the N2 chassis of front and obviously it's this tornado and it's doing grey this was 2008 that's what I saw it on the same day I saw Blue Peter at uh, Barrow Hill that was 20 that was, no, that was 2010 with the grey Marquis but anyway um yes so there has been a change as the title suggests um my model railway a change has happened um and Anthony I'm thinking of you straight away because we spoke about this earlier didn't we and it's actually I was having a bit of a, what I was calling a wobble towards the Great Western, and this is actually why I did a video yesterday, because I really felt like I was heading there. I used my Duke dog, and it was like, oh my god, it's amazing. What happened? I, I, I'm, I'm not going Great Western. Now, all my problems is I really struggled to visualise things, and I couldn't visualise um, LNER locos. That's why it's got them for me. It's in black, LNER thing. But uh, yeah, I couldn't visualise any other locos in the same situation um, that I could imagine Great West Ninjas rather easily. I really struggled to visualise it. I was like, I can't, I can't get fired up for this. But um, what? I, did, I had a really good chat with Gary, who I've told is now had to be CV. Railway councillor because you know in my previous video I sort of said a lot about I don't I want to make sure it's my own decision not someone else's decision and the things I was saying his responses were fantastic in the way they didn't lead me to anything but having to make my own choice like it was more like a Are you sure that's wise or I said or should I reconsider the other two companies other than the LMS again. Um, yeah, the rest of it is like, you yeah, know, well, and it was all like a, you know, you, you're only reconsidering those because you're reconsidering at the minute what you're doing. It's like, and it comes down to it, it was between the end and the end the Great Western. Now, this is something I'll point out to Anthony and Gary, as you and I have a weekly chat with Anthony, um, is there's a photograph of me aged about four or five with a Mallard sweatshirt on, a fantastic sweatshirt, I've probably mentioned it before on videos, but a fantastic sweatshirt, and um, I'm stood in front of the Truro <laughs> at the NRM, so it's like, this this has been a big conflict for many years, but um, basically, I had asked myself a question before the call with uh, Gary, just to sort of say, well, yeah, if you got money was no object, you got given money, Great Western, what would you get? Locos. That's pretty locos. What'd you get? Right now. Oh well I'd get Sushi Truro, I'd get a Star, I'd get Hall, um, you know, another Akura Scarpani on order. I have got fifty seven forty one, or aka Duck on pre order. Uh with sound of course. <laughs> um and that lift off quite quickly. LNER I struggled. I thought some coaches. No, that's not local, that was not the question. So it eventually it came through and I thought I'd see one. And I thought that's actually it's this equivalent to your Truro that you just thought out because of that or what anyway. Because C1's not still BR, and obviously and at that time I was thinking BR Eastern region. But as I, my conversation with Gary went on tonight, as I thought, I wonder if you change your era is more a thing. Do I want the standards? What are the standards bought to me? Which ones right now? Go. 9F 92212. 
I have no idea with the modern women in that one. Um, because of that place, the Great Central, and a big impact that injury made on me. Also the fact that I've got photos of it on the Neaton turntable. Um, I will go all the me. Yeah, all the boys. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got photos on the Neaton turntable. And the other one is the standard 3MT tank. I've just really grown a fondness for those. Obviously, I know they're based on the Great Western Marsh Prairie. I think it's seeing the one at the Seven Valley so complete now. It really sort of, again, made a little bit of an impact on me early in this year. Early, early this year. So, yeah. But so far beyond that, possibly a Britannia. But beyond that, yeah, I could take a leave of some of the others. So, it's like, okay, not so important then. Let's bump that down. We can play two safe ones. So, we'll bump it down to that. The Diesels, Class 17 is a nice one but again it's one or two bump that down the three lnr locos that you won't you will struggle to get now you could just about have an a2 like blue peter those who don't know what an a2 or something like that, if you've seen blue peter that's an a2 um the only a2 <laughs> left um and just ignore mr raven's a2 for this purpose of this exercise anyway um ah peppercorn was delivered in 47 but it's december 47 so i would argue it's really dubious whether that was turned out in any apple green or not we've had any other nintendo it probably was turned out apple green with british trials nintendo like tornado which honey just came on screen again here at the seven valley which i believe that is tornado the thing is away is the main play i think more than anything because it's that r blue um but anyway um i'll stop being distracted with that but um It's, it's it's a dubious one, and personally, the ones named after people, I don't know, I might, I might be tempted one day, we'll see, it's not, it's not a priority one. The other two I'll definitely know goes the A1, like Tornado, and the K1, um, the Peppercorn Thompson K1, as opposed to the earlier K1. Um, they were ordered by the LNER, but produced under BR. In fact, the K1s were ordered in like 1946, I think it said on the LNER.info website, but they weren't production in start of 49, so, you know, it's one of those. But where you lose those three, you gain other engines that are more unique looking. So the W1 is a big one. The P2s. And again, you've got two different styles of P2, the Bugatti Nose and with the original. But she got three because Earl Marischal had another style to manufacture her again, so technically you got three there. But anyway, as I started to think this, the old brain box started whirring. It's like, hang on a minute, this would be really cool. And I started to gain momentum. I started to picture things like, oh my god, and I've got that beautiful brake van which is at the end of this train here. It's gorgeous. Brought it, the last time I, went, I thought about doing something in any other, I thought, well, I need a brake van anyway never used it. That's the first time it's run on the layout, on, on the my ownership. You know, <laughs> it's gorgeous. But the other great thing is, it brings, you can just see it there, the N7, the Great Eastern Tank. Um, it's in grey, it's in Great Eastern Grey, it's a first of all every. It's not been overhauled since the LNR came into business. So the idea is next to that is to get it sent off, get it weathered. By um, I've selected a company to do it, or an individual to do it. And I look forward to contacting them to arrange the weathering of this engine. I would, if that's successful, I'd like them to do the others because I've seen the weathering how I want it uh, on like the P2 and that. I want this to be a bit more scruffy because it needs to look like it's ready for the works. But it makes that a viable engine for the roster for my LNER left than a stand-in for a BR version of itself. So, yeah, so you got the W1, the P2s. Um, you yeah, know, they're, they're the big ones, really. you got the Streamline B17s. I'm not sure if they left into BR Streamlined or not, but they are there, and the Hornby are doing those. So that's really cool. You gain liveries, you gain the silver livery of the A4s, you gain the grey livery of the W1. So whilst I prefer the Bugatti nose on the P2, the W1 to me has to look with it, so it's got to have the original boiler. You need that, you, what made it special, what made it unique was that was that boiler, which if you've ever seen a cross section, to me it looks like one of those old school radiators with the tubes up and down, just 
happens on a much bigger scale. It's really quite interesting. It shows it works. It was fascinating. It's a interesting experiment. Well worth having a look up. And um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So and again, it's a model tick, so it's something a bit different. But uh, yeah, and obviously the Peter are doing those. And no one's doing that yet. I don't know if it's actually run into the LNER or not. And that did run into the LNER. So again, that is something else potentially I could have and run because it did run. Okay, not anywhere near my line, but P2's didn't run on the line, let's let the branch line less year. And actually, we, we've decided, me and Gary decided, he suggested that it, I could run it on a local pickup goods. And I said, do you know what? I think if I go with this, I'm going to have to. I'll see the time I still considering. And it'd be called the, um, <laughs> the, oh no, hang on. It's going to be called the something rambler. The purest rambler, that's it, the purest rambler. Um, so yeah, so expect that one as a video when it comes. And obviously, Fly Scott's one of the greatest entertainers in any other days for a time, so I could have it have an apple green. Flying Fox is my favourite of those. I can have Garter Blue A4, Merlin, my favourite one. Here's his Merlin. So yeah, basically, I am able to say now, grasp the ball with both horns. Hello, my name's Christopher, and I model the LNER. <laughs> Sorry, hide the credit, hide the New York Central stuff. I model the LNER as my main. Um, and then anything else I want, on the great, oh, well, Actually, the Great Western will touch in a second. But anything else like Southern, LMS, BR, some of the standards I mentioned. Or even, yes, even Great Western. <coughs> even LMS, uh, Great Western or LNR. Or if I want to get an A1 or an A2 or a K Capricorn or an A1. That's where the Heritage Line comes side of it comes in. Uh, so that's the, that's the steam release there. That's the pressure safety valve release. But the Great Western comes back into it when I get the larger space. The LNER, and now I'm doing LNER on the BR Eastern region, it can intermingle with my Great Western livery and stuff. And obviously I can still have the interregional coming in anyway. That's what I was planning to in the Eastern region. There's a Great Western engine at the front. But when I get the bigger space, I could model the main line somewhere in a fictional location somewhere near Banbury, where the two actually mingled properly. For real, with a touch of southern occasionally as well, so yeah, there's a little bonus there. So, um, yeah, the Great Western, I can do the Great Western as well, basically, but my primary is definitely going to be the LNER. So, yes, um, and just to cover the final base, uh, I know I touched on in the last video saying. When I was growing up, I sort of just looked at catalogs and went, oh, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that I like and just on the, basically what I'd call a rule of cool. That looks cool. I like it. That's what I do with Japan. That's how I've done my entire Japanese setup. There's some things I've brought because they've had, I've known the history and that connected with it, but most of it is just, that looks cool. Especially a lot of the modern units and that. So I can exercise that to my heart's content. Now it gives me something different. With those, with, with, with that side of my modelling to, to this. Also, my 009 modelling is largely a slightly rule of cool. It sort of dips in both worlds, really, because you've got the rule of cool with things like Charles, but then you've got period modelling with my trench railway, as I'm doing with my good chum, Greg. So, yes, thank you for sitting through that, and I'm really sorry there's no running session, but it is getting a bit late and I need to go to bed next. I just wanted this video to have an update. So hopefully it's not too long for you. There's about 40 minutes, yeah. And that's partly why I tried to do this way around. So I had the screen behind with some stuff on the return for demonstration here. That was, incidentally, the engine at the back there, 1001. Is it 1001? The long boiler, the North Houston long boiler. Was still running in 37, I believe, 1937. Yeah, yeah. There is, there is some, look at that, there is some info. We were running ridiculously late. For how old it is, it's actually converted back to its original kind state. So there, it looks a lot different. But it had brakes, proper brakes, and everything. That one just doesn't. I think it has a handbrake. So if you know you two for Thunderbolt, you know the implications 
bridge from there. Anyway, take care, stay safe and be well. I'll see you in another video, I hope now. Let's move forward together. Forward with the slope. I mean, took it from the Great Central album, but yeah. Anyway, bye.